Samson, thank you very much, and good morning to my co-panelists and to your good self. Um, I think that uh, <clears throat> the EJUSO by-election is, um, is a litmus test, I guess, as you tried to put it, for 2024. But for us, it's, it's a good indication of what work we must do, not necessarily for the, the intra-party outcomes, uh, that we need to um, intensify the reconciliation uh, work that our party has started. So we have regional reconciliation committees that are working actively to address some internal electoral matters, uh, which has created, uh, you know, discomfort for some people. And that really is what came to head at, at the EJUSO by-election. So there are internal uh, matters that uh, individual interpersonal issues that has risen to become a party issue uh, rather than individual issues. So that, for me, is the sum total of the difficulty we faced in EJUSO. It is completely and entirely distinct from an intra-party, or sorry, inter-party uh, electoral calculations for the party. Um, if the elections 2024 were held today in EJUSO, the new patriotic party would win, as expected. The reason, quite simply being, uh, if, if you're looking at the outcome of the, uh, the, the by-election, uh, Mr. Edubi campaigned as a New Patriotic Party member. That's what he did. He didn't campaign as an NDC or as any other political party member, but he campaigned as NDC, MPP. And so therefore, the vote he got, quite simply, if you add to what MPP uh, candidate Kwabna Bwati got, I think a total of uh, about 99 or so percent of the vote went to a new patriotic party. So uh, that's how you need to process that. Um, and the, the, the calculation of the difficulty of him having gotten a vote really is, is one and the same uh, MPP vote. So there's no difficulty there uh, as in terms of inter-party election in December versus NDC or any other political party, the new patriotic party who struggled and used just so. Mm. Now, what that gives us to do, the indication for us in the JUSO is that we have work to do internally. And if you uh, heard our national chairman talked about even to the extent of talking uh, to a Duomi to realize that he must come home. And I think that that's the grand work that we must do uh, in all regions, but most especially in the Ashanti region, to reconcile and bring our troops back home and identify that what exists internally are interpersonal issues that must not be made to become a party issue that potentially could affect the party's prospect in 2024. So I guarantee you that before that day uh, happens when uh, uh, the EC allows all of us to vote on the 7th, those matters will be, will be done and dusted and the new patriotic party will move strongly uh, with expected victory in Ashanti region, mm. starting from Ashanti region. Right. The CODEO, the Coalition of Domestic Election Observers, have issued a statement and they feel that the developments in EJUSO are very worrying and something ought to be done. They speak about the MP caught on video, which we get to shortly. Mm but they also speak about where voters are seen and captured on camera showing, you know, 100 Ghana CDs and they are pointing to somebody belonging to the NPP in a white vehicle who was the one going around and distributing those monies. They say the incidents, the reported incidents of vote buying raise equally troubling concerns. Kodeo has observed with great worry the alarming and increasing incidents of vote buying in Ghana's elections, particularly during party primaries and by-elections. Although the right to vote is granted to each individual voter, the vote is not a piece of private personal property that the voter can sell or trade to anyone willing to pay for it. Beyond the disrespect to the individual voter in offering to purchase his or her in inalienable rights, vote buying and vote selling undermine 
the people's collective right to be represented or governed by persons chosen in a free and fair elections. Vote buying goes against the fundamental principle of a free and fair election. The cornerstone of election integrity in a democracy, uh, in a democracy. So how do you feel about that? That this is just, was almost an internal contest. Right. And yet money was just flying all over the place. Well, I, <clears throat> uh, to be very honest with you, I, I've seen those videos, um, but um, I don't know the sources of those monies they are referring to. Mm. Uh, I have not had reason to give money to anyone. Um, I've been in that constituency for um, a good amount of time. Um, I, I appreciate the work that was done by others, but for my team, most especially, we did house to house, we did community engagement with a view of letting them know what the government has done, the track record of the individual who they have selected, uh, Komna Boati, to lead them uh, to replace Dr. John Kuma, um, his capacity to be able to continue the work that was at stake. Um, and I thought that the feedback we were getting was clear. And, and mind you, this is our constituency uh, to, to win. And so uh, we invested <coughs> considerably for purposes of winning the election. Now, I don't see the place where uh, we would have done all that work only to want to use money to induce people's votes. What I, I know may in some cases be consider, considered will be you know, transportation, providing transport to bring people back and forth, especially the aged, but that is not what is being published by, uh, in, the, in, the, in the social media to have happened, but these monies that people are saying, I don't think that uh, uh, the party had any plans to do that. The party didn't organize anything to do that. Now, if individuals did that out of their own volition, that is not sanctioned. Um, you know the track record of our party. We inherently, we believe in, um, in one man, one vote. Um, so any facilitation that will go against the, the proper conduct of um, election, I don't think that uh, the party will sanction. And so, um, to the extent that these things remain social media, uh, you know, no, not social media. Evidence. Our reporters actually captured the voters. Yes, I'm saying that. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. saying that, but then they, they didn't say Richard gave it to me, right? They said somebody gave it to them. Who is that person? We don't know who. And, and it could well be these people posturing, because, you know, this political environment is fested with all sorts of machinations. So, individuals could come up from the woodwork and do this and go and take this camera. I can tell you that similar things happen in Asinov where people are saying, oh, we're flashing money up. They pointed, they pointed to someone in a white vehicle who is uh, a government official. Okay, well, the police should, should find out who the person is, and then, then we can begin to have a substantive conversation. Okay. Otherwise, what this is before us is speculation. And I can tell you that people are capable of putting this up and creating the appearance that something grand like that has happened that a new patriotic party went to a Jusso and was flashing money and buying votes left, right, center, right? Just to discredit the party, just to make the party look bad. People have capacity. They have the time, they have the resources to stage these kinds of things. But what I want to assure you and your viewers is that as a party, we've never sat down to orchestrate to say our strategy includes sharing money. We didn't do that. And I just told you that I was there considerable amount of time every evening we went community engagement concurrently with house to house, engaging people, sharing information, telling them why they must vote for their party. Because we saw that the election was internal and therefore we needed to cover every inch of space to ensure that the turnout was there and the victory was there for the party. So yes, I've seen those videos, but I could guarantee you that that cannot be a direct product of the New Patriotic Party sanctioning those behaviors. Mm.